the middle fork of the Salmon River. It's a powerful place where the road ends and raw wilderness begins. It's a hundred miles of untamed white water cutting deep through the heart of the largest wilderness in the lower 48. Each summer as raft guides, we can't help but stare up at the peaks high above the canyon walls and imagine what they'd look like, just covered in snow. As skiers, we had this idea of setting up camp, hiking, and then skiing lines back down to our boats. But the more we dreamed about it, the more questions came up. (laughs) Would there even be enough water in the river? Would we run into deadly log jams? Would we have to portage our boats? Would the weather hold, or would we just spend 10 days soaking wet and miserable? We knew it wasn't going to be easy. Hell, we weren't even really sure if it was going to be possible. But we figured there's only one way to find out. I'm nervous. <laughs> this is the story of the time we got a crew dialed in, rigged up our boats, and chased our crazy dream to ski the Middle Fork. We have a lot of stuff, and there's not a lot of water. Our first challenge was just getting to the actual middle fork. You see, the normal boat launch was completely buried in snow. So we had to improvise and just try our luck on this tiny tributary called Marsh Creek. Let's get through this. Logs, nope, nope. Yeah, I think it's um, pointy rock, right, right. strategizing yeah. purposely. And then it's shallow enough that you can jump off. In places so we can stop and really um, And then there's logs everywhere. <laughs> and now there are roller balls coming down the slope. <laughs> Straight into the river. <laughs> you have any get out of boat jail free cards? <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn it. Not yet. Thinking about sloughing over that upper pour over. Getting stuck in between these two and then just shimmy in through. And hopefully the current will take us out this way. There's another log on the right channel. <laughs> oh yeah, I totally forgot to mention, none of us had ever taken rafts down this section of river. Holy shit. It, was, it sucked more once we got through the like scouted part. We were calling it full body boating. And after an entire day of wrestling our heavy ass rafts through this shallow creek, We'd made it about four miles. Like how much more do we got left? We went trail bridge, island, rapid. But then, and then look, we've, we're at a creek right this, now. There's a creek. Absolutely, it should be coming in right over here. But it is getting close to five. I think there's a decent spot. I gotta check it out real fast. After setting camp, We traded our dry suits for ski gear and then popped up into this cool little burn to check out the snow. skied back into camp, we started to realize this idea might not be so crazy after all. Hey, <laughs> What's for dinner, man? Sick. Oh, we the 
next morning, we re-rigged our frosty boats and pushed off just to find a river-wide strainer right around the next corner. Since your log in the river isn't very conducive to getting rafts over it, we're gonna try and get in there, clean some stuff up, see if we can't get ourselves a channel through. Well, we're gonna hook up all these boats to the static line first, lower them down to our second anchor point. From there, Mally's gonna do the break. I'm gonna be the hitcher, and Martin's gonna be the, if anything goes wrong, he'll be there to catch the bag. Cold as hell in my lonely cell, it's cold as hell. Yeah, the strainer. <laughs> that's, the, that's the whole reason we're doing this, is there's a big strainer down there. So finally, after two days of bumper boating our way down Marsh Creek, we made it to the river we were actually trying to be on in the first place. Welcome to the Middle Fork. Ooh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> well done. Fuck yeah, brother. Very well done. <laughs> you drank a beer and then it got fucking rowdy. <laughs> Hectic. The confluence. The confluence, yes. What's special about the confluence? It's where Bear Valley Creek and Marsh Creek become the middle fork of the Salmon River. Oh. <laughs> I got stuck. <laughs> a lot. It was scary. Even at the most forgiving flows, Dagger Falls is nearly unrunnable by raft, which meant we were gonna have to carry our boats around the rapid. But Ryan had other thoughts. Too much to pass, do you mind if I take a look? I thought I had my stash hit well, but I was betting with a loser's luck. In Custer County. Custer we quickly learned that if you're going to portage a bunch of heavy boats, it's actually better to do it with snow on the ground. And preferably with a beverage in your hand. Now, back in the familiar territory of the Middle Fork, we decided to get the hell out of our tick-infested camp and go find some snow. Once we gained the ridge, our summer dreams became reality. Here they were, the Salmon River Mountains, covered in snow. But the sightseeing didn't last too long. It's finally time to do what we came here to do. Go skiing. Things are pretty uniform, it looks like. It's been sitting here for a while. Not gonna lie, some of the snow was pretty bad. Some of it was actually pretty good, but most of it was uh, somewhere in between. But after all the uncertainty, all the planning and hard work, we were here. We were actually doing it, skiing above the middle fork. Go 
was crazy. There was like a line where it just went full mash. As the river grew bigger, the snow line grew higher, and the crew grew stronger. The comforts of a more normal river life were starting to set in. But with a few patches of snow still high above the river, we had one last crazy idea. So we rallied up about 4,000 feet of dirt and rotten snow, hopes to ski in our last few turns before spring fully took hold. Definitely higher than we thought and has a lot more snow than we thought. Looking pretty good. Martin's dreams will come true. We made it back to the boats, tired but satisfied. And with 14 miles of rafting still ahead of us, we chucked on our dry suits and pushed down the river, making it to camp just before it got completely dark. As the quickly melting snow added to the rising flow of the river, we cruised down into the lower canyon and took in the beauty of the awakening spring. It's the tiniest flower ever. <laughs> <laughs> Dusting it around and it was just You never guess the places that I've been With the toughest challenges now behind us, all that was left was to soak up the magic of the wilderness around us. I'm never gonna let the day begin. It wouldn't be a river trip without a river wound. Ooh, dude. Nice one. Let's see. That's a good one. With so many unknowns going into this trip. We had prepared for the absolute worst. And the Middle Fork, well, it gave us its best. Our dream ended up becoming something so much more than we could have ever imagined. And please just let me sleep. Give me my dreams. It was in the collective experience that we found success. No one of us could have been prepared for this. It was in coming together around a common goal, our common dream, that made this a trip we'll talk about and laugh about 
for the rest of our lives. Never gonna come down from above Cause everything looks better from above But nothing's ever as it seems yet Except in that world that I dream of Cause I, I can't face this day alone Oh darling, please just let me sleep Oh yeah Between us all, we've run this river hundreds of times, and each time is special in its own unique way. But this trip, this trip was a whole nother kind of special. It was, I would say, borderline. After our scouting run, I didn't feel that great about it. Yeah, this is gonna be maybe, I I would wanna raft it. You hear horror stories of people spending days in Marsh Creek portaging around log after log. But yeah, considering our other option of snowmobiling everything into Boundary Creek, we decided that Marsh Creek might be our better option and that we would go for it. I guess I need to get more into ski touring. <laughs> There's no lifts out here. <laughs> Secretary Udall and I have uh, been working for four years to uh, enact a wild and scenic rivers bill, which will establish a national system of wild and scenic rivers, which in my judgment will one day contribute as much to public recreation in the great outdoors as the national park system does today. <laughs> 